Hello friends, welcome back to Zombie Zoology. I'm Zombie Zebra and today I am doing the This Is My EDS tag. It is the tag that talks about our own individual experience with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. It was started by Annie Elaney. That's a really cool name, I really like that name. But it was started by Annie Elaney and it is a three-part tag. This is part one, look out for part two and three coming up soon. Uh, so part one, uh, I'm gonna read the little statement she put in. Uh, for EDS Awareness Month, it's not EDS Awareness Month, I'm sorry, I'd like to try and uplift the diversity of EDS and how it impacts our lives as individuals. After having a doctor say, I know someone else with EDS and they don't use a wheelchair, I think our individual narratives need to be uplifted. EDS manifests itself on a wide spectrum on our si and our symptoms can be fluid as well. You can answer these questions on a blog, but I really conjured them up for, for, with a video series format and three parts to be released through the month in mind. Feel free to include any question that you don't apply to you or you're not comfortable answering. Feel free to add your own if you'd like to discuss. The goal is to have them start to go up on May 1st or whatever spoons allow. Well, this is when spoons allow because this is when I found it. Sorry, I'm late on the train. Part one, what is EDS like on my body? This is my EDS. And the hashtag for this tag is hashtag this is my EDS. Number one, introduce yourself. Names, pronouns, and EDS type. I am Ruth or Ruthie. I have type three EDS. Well, we just got rid of the numbering system. So I have hypermobile type EDS. My pronouns are she, her, or they, them, whatever you prefer. First things first, in one word, how are you feeling today? Advantageous. I was not asked to come into work today because my shows didn't sell, so I decided to make a video instead, and I'm liking that outcome. For those who don't know, how can you explain EDS medically in a sentence? Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is a degenerative genetic disorder that causes the body to produce faulty collagen which makes up the connective tissue of the body leading to unstable joints, stretchy skin, and generalized chronic pain. As well as related conditions. What's your favorite analogy for how EDS feels or what EDS is like? The battery analogy, which I believe I've made a video on. If so, I'll link it down below. Uh, but it basically is saying that your body is like a phone battery and we have to charge it up every day. And some people's phone batteries drain faster than others and doing certain activities take up more percentage than others. And certain conditions like cold or hot make the battery drain faster or slower. Um, so all of those kind of things, things like extra battery packs that can help lengthen the life of phones, uh, all of that good stuff. I love the battery analogy. I'll leave it to me to explain in my own video down below. Uh, what are your symptoms and comorbid illnesses conditions? Uh, she actually left a list here, so I'm just going to go through them and read off the ones I have because that sounds easy. Chronic pain, yes. Joint pain, yes. Muscle pain, yes. Hypermobility, yes. Lax and fragile joints, yes, but not as bad as some people. They're definitely lax, they're not so much fragile. I've never broken a bone because every time something has happened, specifically to my fingers, they've just hyperextended back and gone about their day. So I've never had a full on dislocation, I don't think. And I've never had a um, broken bone. So um, those are both interesting things. Uh, frequent dislocations and subluxations. I would say I sublux sometimes. There are times I don't really know what's going on, but I'll be doing something, I'll feel a pop, it'll be like pain all of a sudden, and then I twist in some way, pop something back, and it's all good again. So it doesn't feel like a dislocation because it's not that dramatic, it's just like pop, ah, pop, okay. It's, it's pretty cut and dry. Um, let me see, easy bruise, most definitely. Stretchy skin, no actually, my skin doesn't stretch much at all. It's, uh, it's pretty, pretty cemented on there. Uh, chronic fatigue, most definitely. Chronic migraines, not as much since my spinal surgery. I used to get eight to nine migraines a month. Now I maybe get one, which is awesome, it's way better. Uh, Chiari malformation, have that. POTS, have that. Dysautonomia, have that. Gastroparesis, have that. Sleep disorders, I actually don't have any sleep disorders. I sleep pretty okay, surprisingly, uh, with a lot of you know sleep medication. Uh, seizure disorder, no. Anxiety, yeah. Depression, yeah. Bipolar, no. Lower memory, yeah. Irregular body temperature, yeah. I have a hard time monitoring my own body temperature and uh, regulating it. 
Uh, reproductive issues, no. Uh, aneurysms, no. Degenerative disc, disc disease, no. SI joint disease, no. Uh, so we've gotten some more specifics there. I do not have. Uh, how does EDS impact your daily life? How often are you in the hospital? What physical disabilities impact your daily life? Uh, devices you use for survival? Do you work? Are you often on bed rest? How often are you injured? How do you prevent injuries? How often? How does it impact your emotional, your mental health? So, I have to say I am on the luckier end of EDS, I would say, in that I am not bed bound. I am able to be up and around. I actually have two jobs at the moment working at each about 20 hours a week, so I'm at about full time-ish. Uh, I'm just kind of right below it there. I, so I feel very fortunate. Uh, I have to really stretch myself and expend myself to get there. It's quite a drain and I'm struggling through it right now, but I think my body will adjust. Uh, so I'm very lucky in that in the past year I've been able to make significant improvements. I was in rehab for a while to kind of rehab my joints and my body and I'm working out on my own now. So I'm very fortunate that I've seen some improvement and I've been able to hold a job. I've been working at my current job for about a year and a few months now. So it's been going pretty well. I've actually called in sick twice in the whole year and some months that I've worked there. So I feel very good about that. Now the way that I do that is for the first while when I was working at this place, it's a room escape. And when I was working there, it was the only thing I did during the week. So I would work Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and not really work the rest of the week. So I would spend the rest of the week just like resting, just down, just dead. Resting, resting, resting up for the weekend when I would work, pump out all my shows, get everything done, and then go back to resting, resting, resting. So for me, the most important thing was I only took on what I could handle at that time. And then I reached a point recently where I could handle that and was kind of just bored the rest of the time and I didn't need to be in bed as much. So I was kind of wasting energy. So I decided, okay, I'm gonna find a second job. Found a second job. Um, very, very fortunate. And now it's definitely a struggle to keep up with both, but my body is adjusting. My body's getting there. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping to keep both of these jobs and get to a 40 hour work week capability. I'm not quite there yet, but I'm hoping to get there. Um, now my new job, because it is more physically strenuous, I've actually gone home twice for throwing up on the job, which is highly embarrassing. But if you have gastroparesis and POTS, you may understand a sharp spike in activity can do that to you, especially because I had to eat before I went in because it was like a seven hour shift. So that has been my more embarrassing for recently. I don't actually find myself in the hospital too often. The main time I went to the hospital was in college when I wasn't near my parents. And so if I needed to be taken care of, I needed to like go somewhere to be taken care of. Um, but that was just for like the really severe migraines and I couldn't hold any food down, that kind of stuff. Other than that, my main foray into the hospital was my spinal surgery. I haven't been hospitalized too much. Like I said, I'm on the luckier end of the EDS spectrum, I believe. Uh, so you guys, that was the part one of the EDS, this is my EDS challenge. So um, I'm tagging all of you watching, whether you have a channel or not, I definitely recommend you answer these questions, share your experiences, because doctors have too one-dimensional a view of what Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is. And I personally would love to hear your answers to some of these questions in the comments down below. Feel free to share. Until next time, hoard those spoons, guys.